Today we're going to be looking at a pair of Ultra Compact Travel Strollers, the Baby Zen Yo-Yo Plus and the Mountain Buggy Nano V2. Despite there being a wide number of decent Ultra Compacts to come out over the last few years, the Yo-Yo still generally holds our own personal top spot among them, for a few reasons that we'll get to throughout the course of this comparison. But this doesn't mean that a lot of other models don't have something to offer on the current market. And the Nano is definitely one of those, having even a couple of pretty strong advantages over the Yo-Yo itself. Let's kick off with a few stats. The Nano clocks in at 5.9 kilos versus the Yo-Yo 6.2, and folds down to 51 by 46 by 30 centimeters versus 52 by 44 by 18 on the Yo-Yo. Note with these folded dimensions though, that those given for the Yo-Yo are for the entire stroller. Well, with the Nano, in order to achieve these dimensions, it's necessary to remove the wheels. And thus, even with the wheels removed, the Nano comes in as both larger than the Yo-Yo and also, unfortunately, larger than the official cabin luggage guidelines of 56 by 45 by 25 as set by the International Air Traffic Association. This doesn't absolutely mean that you can't use the Nano as carry-on luggage, but you should definitely check with your airline first because as far as I've seen at least, these dimensions do disqualify the Nano as carry-on luggage from at least 50% or so of the bigger airlines. This increased size on the Nano has been put to use, however, and one of the chief advantages of the model is the size of its seat. Just based on weight capacity, 20 kilos for the Nano versus 15 kilos on the Yo-Yo, and measuring the base and backboards with a measuring tape, the difference between these two is not always immediately apparent. A big part of this is that people often overlook a pair of peripheral factors that actually have a significant effect on the functional size of the seat and the age of the child it can accommodate. Namely, how high the canopy sits up off the seat back and how low the footrest sits from the seat. When you take the increased distance with both of these factors into consideration, it's safe to say that the Nano will comfortably seat a, char a larger child than the Yo-Yo. So while I would say that the Yo-Yo will be most comfortable for a child up to around two and a half years, It'll still see the three-year-old, it'll just be a little cramped. The Nano, by contrast, will be more spacious for three years old and older. The Nano will also be a bit more comfortable for smaller children as well, since it has an adjustable leg rest, which is pretty crucial for comfortable napping. The Oyo sells a leg rest as a separate attachment, but having an adjustable leg rest integrated into the stroller itself is a definite plus. I'd like to cover a few additional aspects of functionality before moving on to the mechanics. Right out of the box, the Nano is, in a way, easier to fold down in that it involves fewer activation mechanisms. But the need to strap the handle portion to the main body of the stroller, as well as fold in the separate rear housing bits and remove the wheels if you want to use it as carry-on luggage, makes it less user-friendly in the end. The Yo-Yo, by contrast, has a simple two-step fold, which locks itself, and the only thing that sometimes gets in the way of making this process effortless is that the front wheels are occasionally angled wrong and you have to flip them around to complete the fold. Both of these models have a shoulder strap, which is a definite plus when it comes to ultra compacts as it allows for a quick fold and carry if you're hopping on public transport or entering a crowded shopping space. Both of these models have the same weight capacity in the shopping basket, but the Yo-Yo's is more accessible as the Nano's basket is somewhat blocked off by the adjustable leg rest in the front and a support bar in the back. The Yo-Yo's handle is quite a bit higher too, but the Yo-Yo's handle is higher than most competing models. And when it comes to driving, while the 6-inch wheels of both models means that you pretty much need to stick to smooth terrain, the Yo-Yo's wheels are more sturdily fixed to the chassis, meaning that the stroller will drive a bit smoother and will be less impacted by the jolts of uneven terrain over time. We'll get into this more in a moment, but now let's shift over to the mechanics of these models, starting with their folding systems. Okay, starting off with the Mountain Buggy Nano then, the way it folds, there are a pair of buttons in here that will release the handle and canopy portion. And then this mechanism, as it folds all the way in, will activate a second mechanism here to fold down the rest of the stroller. Now, when this is functioning as it should, as in right out of the box, it's fine. It's kind of nice that you actually only have a pair of buttons that you have to press in, and the rest is activated by folding. Uh, the problem with this, of course, is that you have internal mechanisms here that have to then activate the ones below, and this involves a lot of complicated uh, wires and uh, pieces that have to activate each other inside, so there's a lot more room for something to go wrong. In addition to that, there are quite a few very thin, riveted crossbar points along the chassis that I do believe will wind up weakening over time. Uh, even just right out of the box, it definitely feels a good deal more flimsy in a way than the Yo-Yo, and that has to do with all of those separate small crossbars that are set up for, uh, for holding it all together. One uh, last thing about the folding system on the Nano is that when it's all the way folded down, this uh, part of the portion of the mechanism does not actually lock. 
And in order to keep this top portion of the chassis from folding out, you have to use a strap. Um, I guess that's okay, but for me it feels like a little bit of an afterthought uh, as far as they, they created the entire folding mechanism and then realized that and then added the strap as like a quick fix at the end. I can't say that's how it happened, but it, it doesn't feel as uh, technically finished as you would if this mechanism had actually locked when the whole, folders, fo whole stroller is folded down. The Baby Zen, by contrast, has a very uh, tight, sturdy, and well-constructed folding mechanism. At the top, it might look the same. You have a pair of buttons here that will also release the handle and the canopy setup. But once you have that folded down, in order to fold the rest of the stroller, you have to reach underneath the stroller and activate a relatively large handle that's in the center. Um, thus, it's different from the Nano in the fact that there's only one mechanism there, whereas on the Nano, it's one on each side. So you avoid that sort of symmetry issue where as the stroller loosens, one side might click out while the other one doesn't. In addition, both of these mechanisms are incredibly simple. Uh, they're just like a single button and spring sort of a setup. In this case, it has to do with uh, interlocking like toothed wheels. And underneath, it is, as I said, like a large handle that's also spring activated and just deals with a pair of very large hooks that hold the whole uh, chassis together, the whole assembly. As the yo-yo folds as well, all of these points are put together with screws so they can be tightened if they need to be if it starts to loosen over time and just the way the bars are a bit thicker and uh, the way the symmetry is on it i actually don't haven't seen any real loosening in relation to the larger elements of the chassis a little bit with the back frame um, but that is it. it's very small in comparison to what i would expect will occur with the uh, with the nano over time Okay, we're gonna have a little bit of a closer look at the lower rear frame of both of these strollers. Um, start off by pointing out that neither of these really have any suspension. Baby Zen claims to have suspension, and what they're talking about is the fact that there is like a rubber disc inside here. So there is, I suppose, a little bit of tension between the bars here with the back frame, but it's not really enough to provide any sort of suspension in relation to going over any sort of significant terrain, um, which is okay. These are ultra compact travel strollers and you expect to use them in very smooth environments. Uh, both have six inch wheels, both in the back and the front. So again, that's impacting drivability, uh, smooth terrain. Uh, the other thing on the rear frame that I would wanna look at is the brake system. So the Baby Zen Yo-Yo's brake system is quite simple. Uh, just flip this pedal on and off and it rotates a pair of pins out into the inside of the wheels. Um, there's not a lot that can go wrong with that system. In fact, I ha really haven't seen any sort of problems uh, with that system at all. The Nano does use a wire system. And um, what can happen with wire systems over time is that the length of the wire can shorten inside uh, and this can create problems whereby one wheel will lock while the other one won't or one will release while the other one won't. Uh, a lot of manufacturers uh, don't put adjustment screws which can help with this. The Nano does actually have adjustment screws underneath uh, these housings which is nice. So if you have trouble with that wire system, you can make some adjustments for it. But overall, it's still a bit more of a complex system uh, than you would have with this just like easy rotating pin type system that you have on Babies and Yo-Yo. Um, last note on the rear frames then would be that the wheels on the Nano altogether are removable, uh, which in the, in the back end is actually kind of nice because um, if you have any trouble with them, you can of course replace them. Uh, the Baby Zen Yo-Yo, you can remove the back wheels if you take off the cover for the back wheel and then uh, undo a screw. But what uh, one of the few things that sometimes goes wrong with Baby Zen Yo-Yo is actually the ball bearings over time, over a number of years, can start to rust and uh, break and stuff. And what I've noticed is that people have a lot of trouble getting these back wheels off once they start to have problems with rusted uh, ball bearings. Um, in some cases, you have to use power tools to cut off what remains of the ball bearings and so on. But uh, overall, uh, it's still a bit sturdier, uh, the overall uh, way that the wheels are mounted into the rear housing, and that is a problem that uh, is sort of something that can occur over a long period of time, um, simply as a result of, of rust and the environment and such. Okay, I wanted to have a little bit of a closer look then at the lower front end of both of these models. Starting with the Nano, the front wheel is removable. Uh, again, it does not have any sort of suspension. Um, they've also gone for this sort of clever stylistic one-walled fork. Uh, the problem I find with this is that because the axle is only supported on one side, uh, it has uh, potential to put a little bit extra pressure on the upper portion of the ball bearing on one side and the lower portion on the other, just with weight as it goes in the stroller. Uh, I suspect this might cause the ball bearings in the wheels themselves to wear down a little bit faster. 
Uh, because the fork is removable, there is also a little bit more of a problem with looseness here. Um, for that reason, they have actually added a, a swivel lock. Uh, but the problem with that looseness is that over time, if the axle starts to widen up the, uh, the shaft in which it's inserted into the frontal housing, you can wind up with sort of a wobbling wheel problem as you go a little bit too fast. Uh, Baby Zen Yo-Yo, by contrast, does have a little bit of suspension built into the fork here. It has this uh, spring here. It's not enough to really go over any sort of real rough terrain, uh, but it will help to protect that whole front uh, frame system and the wheels themselves and, of course, the uh, chassis from wear over time. Uh, the wheels do not have a swivel lock, but they don't really need them because they're also not removable, and they have been fitted into the front wheel housing very tightly uh, using... Um, wave washers and locking washers and such, so that uh, you really aren't going to have any sort of looseness issues, as I said, might occur with the Nano, uh, where you might have like, that wobbling or um, uh, that sort of a problem when you go at speed with the front wheels. I haven't seen that on the Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo's been out for long enough that that sort of a problem would have shown up by now. Uh, so it's a bit tighter construction in the front end on the Yo-Yo than it is on the Nano. So which of these two is better then? Engineering-wise, it's pretty hard to beat the Baby Zen design, in my opinion. Everything on it is just so streamlined, so optimized to be simple and sturdy and supremely functional, while still being capable of taking and beating. At this point, it's a proven design as well, and while, like all stroller designs, it has its weak points, there aren't a lot of them. In my opinion, they should update the seat with an inbuilt adjustable leg rest, but other than this, the yo-yo design just feels finished, like a piece of art. The Nano doesn't feel this way, but that doesn't make it a bad stroller. Despite having subpar engineering in comparison with the Yo-Yo, the Nano is a lot cheaper while still being a premium stroller, purchasable for less than half the price of the Yo-Yo. And with a larger seat, the Nano has a very definite place in the market, something that I wouldn't say about a lot of other Ultra Compacts that are often priced on par with the Yo-Yo without providing the same sort of technical competence. Which one would be right for you then? Again, my personal preference is for the Yo-Yo Plus. But I would say that if you're looking for an ultra compact purely for those one or two trips a year to amusement parks or other smooth paved holiday destinations, then the lower price and larger seat on the Nano may actually make it a good purchase for a lot of people. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting. And if you did, we ask that you subscribe as it helps us continue making videos in the future. Thank you.